Good morning, people. Welcome to another episode of Iron Fist Mining. Uh, it's the 1st of February today, I believe. And I'm at the spot, planning on digging up some gold. It's cold this morning. There's frost, and I'm sniffly. Um, some stuff washed up. Clogged up my holes, so I gotta go unclog some stuff and get to running the sluice, man. See if I can't find some shiny like I did last time. I did some modifications to my sucker. I told you guys I put some wetsuit material in there and it was freezing up as the neoprene was hitting the side. So I'd have to soap it a lot and it was hindering my ability to move material. So I took most of them out. I left one in. Uh, what else can I tell you? Oh yeah. Remember in the episode back or so, I was talking about uh, Gold Rush TV looking for a new crew? Well, I sent in an application, and then uh, I got a phone call. So while I'm setting up and all that junk, why don't I play the phone call for you? I was a little excited about it, so forgive me for this clip. <laughs> anyway, um, if they call back, or whatever, I stand a good chance of being on Gold Rush. Where, I don't know, but I think I'm going to do it if they call, man. So, stick around, stay tuned, enjoy the phone call thing. Uh, we'll see what happens when we come back. Okay, so I just got home from work, and at one point uh, I applied to be on Gold Rush TV, and the other day I got a phone call from them, so check it out, I'll play it for you. You have one old message, Thursday, 10, 18 a.m. Hi, Dan. My name's Georgia. I'm calling from Royal Television. We're the producers of Gold Rush for the Discovery Channel. I received your application, and I was just calling to have a quick chat with you. Um, so if you could email me back and let me know when would be a good time to call you, that'd be great. Thanks, Dan. I look forward to speaking to you soon. Bye. <laughs> nice, huh? Nice. We'll see how it goes. End of messages. Okay, so you got to hear the call, see some of my excitement. I did a little modification to this. Uh, I've noticed that when the water's a little bit higher, if I run it all the way down, it clogs up really fast as most of the current is on the top edge of the water. So, what I did was I uh, welded on square tubes on the end of this thing. And on that down there. So I just carved out some sticks and stuck them in there and then cut them off so I could get some rays out of it. Basically, all you really need is something deep enough to wash a rock off, you know? And I want the current fast enough where it shoves the rocks out of the way instead of having to come and play with them. You know, I'm moving them out of the way. And that's kind of the whole object. Get out of there, rock. Blow it out. Oh, I didn't blow it out. Ideally, I'd like it to be fast enough to do that, but... Uh, that's what I'm going to try to do today, and it'll help it from not clogging down here at the bottom end. You really need something adjustable for variating currents. So, current strengths. Now... Some of you guys are thinking there's just a crap load of gold in here because of what I'm doing. And I have to show you something. The past three episodes, from that rock to that stump, wide, I marked them. Okay, so that way you know where I'm, how I dug, or how far I dug. There was three days. First day from that rock to this one, dug that square out. Second day, down. Now I'm down to where that stick's poking up. So you can see the amount of material I had to move. I mean, it all doesn't fit in the shot. So that's how much material you got to get out of here. It's probably at least a yard at the very least each time. So don't be thinking you're going to come down here and shove a shovel in the ground and pull up a bucket of gold. It's not going to happen. And some of you new people, look, I don't mind showing you this stuff, but I don't want you in my town tearing it up, so 
if you do figure out where this is, you need to be a local to come in here. And I'm not the only one that's going to say that to you. There's lots of people here. So, do not invade a spot. I'm just showing you how to do it. If I catch you down here, I'm going to run you off flat out unless I invite you, period. That's just how it goes. You don't like it, you got to face me. So, keep that shit in mind. And when you irritate me, I'm not a very nice guy. So, I'm going to dig. I moved down some material. I'm going to plan to remove from here where the stick's at down to about the edge of that. So, I got to go. I'm going down two to three feet and about four feet wide and about six feet long. Do the math on that. Some of you math heads will figure it out. Anyway, I'm going to go grab my dredge and start pumping out material. Plus, I'm leaving all the stuff that blows out of the sluice on this inside edge. So when the water level does rise back up, which is way up there, I'll be able to come over here and work some of these tailings. Get some of the gold I blew out. Because I know I'm blowing gold out. When you throw that much material into anything, you're going to lose some gold. The trick is just to get a lot of gold in there so it clumps up. Dig it, dig it. Artificial waterbed. Mm-hmm. Meant for catching heavies. So rather than keep talking, take a drink off my soda and I'm gonna get to work. Okay, so an hour has passed. I started at 9.30, it's now like 9.47. Half hour run time and about a half hour panning to get this. Can't really see if that's showing up. Can't see out here today. But I got some big chunks. Not bad looking. I got some mercury stuck in there. But there's some good gold in that. It's not too shabby for 30 minutes worth of digging. Let's see if I can't get some more. The adjustment thing worked pretty good. It kept it flowing. And if it's catching tiny little particles like what's in there, I'm not really sweating it. So I'm going to raise up the back end a little bit more and try that. See how it works. I didn't really move that much dirt, I just kind of straightened out the line. So, we'll see how it goes. Okay, so it's now 1 o'clock. Uh, I got a big pile of rocks. What I'm doing is, as I'm dredging this, I throw the rocks out, get them out of the way. And I don't think you realize how deep I'm digging. So, I'm going to take this here stick. And we'll get a dip line about that deep. You guys know how long a shovel is, so. Well, that was shovel. Shovel's depth is head. Um, I noticed that the more this way I go after this curve, this is down about 20 feet now, uh, the gold lightened up. So I can see down in here on this shelf right there, there's a bunch of black sand. I can see the mercury shining in there. Something else I've noticed, there's a big layer about halfway down of that float gold. It's not sinking any deeper than that. Down there I'm getting some chunks, which I got in the pan over here. Some decent ones. I don't know if that's showing up or not. I was kind of panning around in there, so you can see in the pan. Dun, dun, dun. Kind of like that piece right there. It's shaped like a crab claw. A big shiny one. Anyway, it wasn't as much as the first pan. Uh, let me get it all together there. But uh, it's definitely a nice little amount of gold. So, I'm going to put that in the jar. And as you can see, I got my sluice set back up. Um, in this current, though, the stupid ejection plate was flying out, so I had to wrap some of the bungee cords that I used to hold it on the bike. So it now sits up right even on the edge, and what I found is the big rocks will just blow right out. 
Same with all the other crappie material, and all I'm catching is the heavies. And with that kind of gold and this kind of current, it's showing you what it's it's doing. So, instead of digging more that way, I'm going to come back this way. I think the vein went from that corner and is coming towards me. So I'm going to obliterate my walking path here. See what happens. Alright, so I ran a little bit longer, and it was a good thing I changed direction because I found bigger gold. Um... Let me try to, I'm having trouble getting it out of this remaining mercury, but there is some really nice chunks in there. Try to do the Fred Dodge, or not Fred Dodge, Fred, Dakota Fred. Do that every time. You see the bigger pieces, huh? Nice up in there. Nice ribbon at the top. You can see the bigger pieces down in here. Let me uh, get it at the shaded angle. Gold, gold, gold. I'm gonna suck that out and then uh, I'll show you the overall total. Dump dump my jar in the pan and you can see all the gold in my face. Oh, Mercury's grabbing it. Sorry, I'm losing light. Stayed down here a long time. And I got quite a bit. Only because I figured out which way the gold was going. But uh, otherwise, I'd have lost it. There goes my little crab claw floating on the top. Gold floats when it gets hooked with mercury. So that's about it, people. I think I'm going to take off up out of here and enjoy the rest of my Saturday. Got to do an oil change, probably help Joe. Do some other junk. So, thanks for tuning in and watching Iron Fist Mining. And remember, people, respect people's spots, you know? If you're not from there, going there, don't treat it like it's yours. Remember, you know? Be cool. Find your own damn spot, you know what I'm saying? Something else you could probably do too is take pictures and then mark where uh, you were getting good gold at. That way you remember. Lay it out in front of yourself. That way, you know, kind of seeing it sometimes helps. That's it for now, people. I'm out of here. Peace out, babies.